What's going on everybody? I'm Greg, you're watching the Car Passion Channel, and today I'm installing coilovers on the main Miata. Now with the number of coilover videos that's been released in the last few months, I'm sure you guys are well aware of how to tighten the three nuts that hold each coilover into the car. But in today's video, you're going to be getting the Car Passion Channel's pro tips and tricks for choosing, assembling, adjusting, and of course installing coilovers in your Miata. What do you say we get started? Starting with the front of the car, make sure both wheels are in the air, get them removed, and then disconnect your sway bar. Disconnecting the sway bar is going to let the suspension arms drop further and make your life easier when you're removing the existing suspension. Now is also a good time to remove that bottom coilover bolt. Once you remove the two 12mm nuts on top, your coilover will be free. Now getting the old suspension out is the tricky part and it is going to be a little bit more tricky if you have stock suspension just because it is longer, but this technique can work uh, no matter what you're starting with. You step on the brake and it's going to lower that down. Start to pull the top towards you and upwards. Pull the whole thing up. Just like that. So here's my new coilover. It's by a company called Power Tricks. And one of the most common questions I get about my car is what coilovers are you running? So now you know I run on Power Tricks coilovers. And your second question is probably why are you removing a set of Power Tricks coilovers to put on another set? And the main reason is this is a higher model in the Power Tricks line. It's got some more performance oriented features. On this coilover, I felt that at almost 300 horsepower and on sticky tires when I was really pushing it I was kind of overwhelming the damping ability of this one. So some of the key upgrades are they both have 15 damper settings. This one the ultralight can just go quite a bit stiffer and it is aluminum so it's a very lightweight unit. You'll see the old coilover is mounted on a rubber bushing on this top hat and it's kind of a comfort feature. It's a little bit flexy but it makes the ride quality better. On the ultralight coilover, it's mounted on a ball joint or a pillow ball, which helps with the responsiveness and uh, crispness of handling, basically. So just a bunch of little changes that make this a more performance-oriented coilover. Right now, I'm going to switch the springs between the coilovers. They're uh, equipped with Swift springs, which you can order them that way from Powertrix. They already have these springs on them. And the reason I'm switching is because this is a 10K spring, this is a 9K spring, and I want to run this on the car when I put the coils in. If you were to buy these, they already come pre-assembled, so you won't really have to worry about this step, but just in case, sometime down the line, if you have a set of coils you want to swap springs on, now you'll know how to do it. Of course, when you're choosing coilovers, it's a, it's a big purchase, so you want to make sure you make the right choice. And my, my selling point on these things has always been, they just seem like a really good balance between daily drivability and being able to you know you guys know i take my car to the drag strip and autocross and and road course and, and all that so they just seem like they they work really well for that and i've actually been using these for many years i've had them on all my 300 zx's i've had them on all my miatas mine is broken boosted now i'm still on race lands unfortunately but you know, I just, I just like them. I don't know. They're, they're not the most expensive. They're not the cheapest, but I feel like you're getting a good amount of value for your money. Just keep track of which washers go where and, and what side they face and you're done. And as far as this top nut, I always like to use an impact. 
It doesn't have to be super tight. Just, and the reason is, if you try to tighten this with a wrench or a ratchet, it's gonna try to spin this shock shaft in here. And you do not want to grip this with pliers or vice grips or anything that can damage it. Because if you scratch it, it can damage the seal going into the shock. It can cause leaking and you just don't want to do it. So the best way to get this on is with an impact. But like I said, if you, you know, most coilovers, I know these, they come pre-assembled so you don't have to worry about it. Having several sets on my 300ZXs and really liking them, when I got a Miata, I hit up Power Tricks and I asked them, can you build me a set for the Miata? Because at the time they didn't offer any and they actually did it and they built them and I went and bought them, I put them on the car and they were okay. So I hit up Power Tricks again and I said, you know what, I like the coilovers, but here's what you could do to make them better. And they were actually really receptive to my feedback. I gave them some suggestions on the spring rates, the spring length and the cup style. They made the changes for me on those same coilovers and I put them back on my car and I absolutely loved them. And that's the set that I just pulled off. They have 55,000 miles on them. They don't leak, you know, there's no issues with them or anything. I just think they're a great combo for, you know, being able to track but still daily driving the car. And then that's what made me, you know, choose to buy these because these are set up the same way my other ones were. You know, like I said, just a couple more performance features, but I know I'm gonna like these a lot too. Now you guys know that I like to hook you up. And I know you like to run my stuff sometimes because I put it through the torture test, gave it my stamp of approval, and then tell you guys about it. So, got in contact with Power Tricks again, and I said, hey, would you be willing to offer my subscribers a discount if they wanted to buy your coilovers? And they said, absolutely. They gave me a coupon code, CPC300, and that's gonna save you guys $300 off of any set of Powertrix coilovers. Even if you get the base model without the Swift Springs, the cheapest ones, it's gonna save you $300. So if you're interested in them, I got a link down below that's gonna tell you more details about these things. If not, if you're using this video to install your Tanes, your BCs, your Flying Me Out of VMAX, I'm gonna continue and get these things into the car. And before I bolt this back into the car, I wanna make sure it's set up properly. Poor coilover setup can lead to bad handling, poor ride quality, clanking noises, etc. The spring is loose. I wanna set this up to have zero preload, so I'm gonna take this bottom collar, and it'll be really loose all the way until it hits the spring, and then tighten it just a hair more so the spring has zero play. Bring this locking collar up to it, and I'll just leave it loose for now because it's gonna be easier to tighten it once it's in the car. Any coilover that has the double collars here and then another collar and cup at the bottom has ride height and preload independently adjustable. So say I wanted to increase the spring rate a little bit, say I didn't feel it was that stiff. Instead of just buying new springs, what I can do is tighten this collar, you know, a quarter inch, half an inch, maybe even a full inch, and then lock this down. It essentially makes the spring stiffer. But the problem is now it's gonna lift the car up and it's gonna be at monster truck height. But since you have this lower cup, you can just thread this in, it will lower the car back down and you'll have your stiffer spring rate. Some coilovers do not have these adjustments independent. You'll just see the two lock rings and there'll be nothing on the bottom. So you can't control those things independently. It's just one feature of a, a better coilover that you wanna look for, especially if you're gonna be driving the car hard. Before I try to put this in, I thread the cup all the way on. It's gonna make the coilover very short and easy to install. Racer Alley, active as usual. These nuts don't have to be very tight at all. They just need to be real snug so nothing's coming loose on you. Now that everything's tightened down, I'm gonna use the spanners, uh, they come with the coilovers, to lock in the preload adjustment. And I'll usually leave the bottom collar loose for now because chances are after I put the car on the ground, I'm gonna to want to adjust the height again. If you do want to adjust the ride height, you just need to make sure this bottom collar is loose. And then you can use the spanners to spin these collars. It'll turn the whole shock 
and right now I'm just adjusting the ride height. If you unthread it, it will raise the car, and if you thread it into the cup, it will lower the car. Moving on to the back, we have this sick license plate that finally came in. VVT power, boys. What you think about that? Seriously though, at the back, I have the sway bar unbolted just like the front, and then you've got one bolt you have to loosen up here on the bottom of the suspension. It pulls out. And then inside the trunk, there are another two 12 millimeter nuts. You can kind of see there. Just like at the front. And using a very similar technique, stepping on the brake rotor, I'll be able to get the coilover out of the car. And same thing, if you're on a stock suspension, this is going to be a little bit more difficult because of the length, but the same technique can be used. Yes, I realize I need new rear brakes. Here's a little comparison of the rears. One awesome thing you'll notice is the more expensive one and even the cheaper one both already come with extended top hats which make the car lower without sacrificing suspension stroke so you can still get that good look on the street, get that street cred, but your handling is not affected. I'm gonna switch out the springs just like on the fronts. I don't really feel like I need to show it because it's the same process and then I'll get these installed in the rear. All right, so top in first and again I've load it as much as possible to make this really short. You saw how easy that was. I didn't even have to step on the brake. Now I just need to get it all bolted up. It can be a huge help to throw a jack underneath the suspension arm. This bolt right here can be a pain to get in. There we go. load locked in all right guys well that's all i got for you today hopefully you learned something new about coilovers hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the content and don't forget to check out power tricks if you're interested in buying coilovers for your own miata i will see you guys in the next one peace out back, back, back from the dead.